you and I are both massive Dragonlance fans. Why are we? Because I like something about that was so evocative right out of the gate. I remember the modules coming out. I go to the comic book store and I would see Dragonlance modules or like even Sears had them, right? And then the books came out and something about it is immediately connected with this world. And you kind of feel like you you, you know what you're getting, right? Like it's kind of like the Star Wars of D&D in a lot of ways. Very much. Because Very much. dragons I... and lances, <laughs> like things are going to pop off. I... I definitely agree with you and when i people ask me what is dragonlance about or i'm in a position to explain what dragonlance is about I, it's star wars and i think it tonally it's empire strikes back um it is it is star wars it's big it's epic fantasy uh, which isn't every fantasy story but this is big epic you know epic fantasy and um yeah and it is it is constructed in a way that is closest i think to star wars there's a lot of i guess in the books there's a lot of influence from the hobbit Mm -hmm. that's for sure um but in structure it's star wars it's about family it's about um you know pretty much the the grand arc of the first six books is you know would you be willing to sacrifice the thing that matters to you most, meaning a loved one, meaning your twin. Would you yeah. be willing to sacrifice your twin if it meant to save the rest of the world? And that's a really, I mean, who doesn't identify with or see, or, you know, who wouldn't be moved by that? Everyone gets that. And so I think at its core, um, in the way that Star Wars was, um, you know, Oedipal, you know, it, it was an exploration of, of the Oedipus myth mixed with like some kind of Shakespearean ghost type of qualities. Um, but there's, it's very ancient Greek and, you know, Joseph Campbell studied all of that. So there was a, there was something that was very true about the original Star Wars. I'm talking about the original three. I'm not talking yeah, about yeah. it. It came after that. I'm just talking about up to 1983. They were, you know, and it was, and, and I think that there are, there are real, you know, truths and really great ideas and, and great relationships in, in Dragonlance, you know, you don't, you don't get the level of romance, you know, in something like the Avengers that you do in, in Dragonlance. And I think that that's very captivating and there's love triangles and, you know, I think those are very, um, very intriguing and offer like a a soap opera quality in a good way, in in, in a very good way. Yeah. Like uh, the relationships between like Tannis and Kitiara and (laughs) who happens to be Brayson's sister <laughs> well and, and then and then lorana and the fact that you have a biracial character who's half elf half human and doesn't know his never knew his parents mm-hmm. and so he's raised by this elf king and uh raised with elven you know adopted brothers and sisters but then gets to a certain age and realizes he doesn't know what the human side is and how could he ever give himself fully to someone if he didn't know what both sides were made of and so it goes off and then you know Lorana the elf king's daughter is broken hearted that he would leave Qualinesti and um, he goes and lives amongst humans and falls in love with a human woman who also didn't know who her father was and you know so you get this very interesting understanding of those issues as they play out in this fantasy setting and I think that there is something that people could um could really sympathize with and, and there's something very compelling about that it was also it turned things on its head i remember because as it starts out everyone's getting back together after a long time they're not meeting at an inn they're getting back together in it at, at an inn and so you're seeing the damage that some some time has caused like you see ray sun for the first time with his hourglass eyes and golden mm-hmm. skin like things have occurred and that's when the war pops off and it's it's such a such a great beginning to a story because I, I remember the first time I read it and I was in middle school, I was like, okay, here we go. We're gonna introduce all the characters and everything's fine. And then war. Just war. <laughs> <laughs> and it never stops. It's just a just everyone running. Yeah, I love the idea that you know, everyone grew up in this town or was connected to this small town. And then they all left to go on their quest. Once they arrived of age, they went off. And, 
you know, five years later in the book, they all return and have witnessed strange things afoot in the world. Mm -hmm. And so they're, you know, they get back together to exchange notes about some of the things that they've seen and, uh, or heard. And, um, you know, I love the idea of a world where, you know, dragons disappeared, healing, magic disappeared, the gods disappeared. And then you realize they're all back. And now you have this world that has to now cope with that as both sides jockey to harness its power uh, with this impending collision happening with, you know, the world at stake. And I love the history of the world and, and the principles that it talks about, the idea about false deity worship, who benefits from that. You know, th these are interesting questions that were posed to me as a teenager that I was very much ready to spend a lot of time thinking about. It was, uh, and those first three books are amazing in that sense. And then they, they went even further with uh, legends, which I was blown away by. And if you like time travel, I highly recommend it. And all, and all of the things that you have to worry about when it comes to time travel. But that's when that really came into play was like, you have on one hand that brother who has to, to determine, am I willing to sacrifice my brother to save the world from him? And then another brother who's like, am I willing to sacrifice my brother so I can basically essentially become a god? Because I am a character who has been picked on my entire life. I have felt weak my entire life. I'm not going to let that happen again. And it's just great stuff. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's well, in, in, in the codependency between those brothers and yeah. the sense of obligation that the one brother feels to take care of and protect the other brother who had always been picked on his whole life. And then the, the incredible resentment that the young, that the weaker brother yeah. feels because he needs somebody and he, uh, but then the idea that when Tika comes along, Carmen, then Raceland can tell that Carmen is falling in love with Tika. Yeah. And that this is going to happen and whether he likes it or not. <clears throat> and now the clock gets, gets, you know, the clock starts ticking mm -hmm. because he needs to grow in power not only to get away from his brother, but now the, the path is clear. He is now going to, he knows that he will never truly be happy. He knows that he will never truly find love. And he allows himself to give up on that in order to just put everything he has into power and ambition. And where does that lead? Well, it leads with becoming, you know, it ends up with becoming a God. And, um, you know, and, and of course, Karam and then tries to start a family with Tika and, and the kids, but he's nothing. He's just this broken man without his brother. Right. They can't live without each other. So it's just such a, you know, it's such a, a rich storyline that really and truly you, you, whatever you think Dragonlance is about, it's, it's a story about family. It's, a, it's, it's in the bonds and the tie us to, to blood. Um, and then also to, to friends and what that means. Um, and uh and, and love and, and loss and you know there's there's just so many cool uh so many like i said so many great ideas and great relationships in those books and you've got to actually play like we were talking about mm -hmm. this before the video you got to play with margaret weiss playing tass off burfoot so you have now you have a character who has a direct relationship to one of i would insidious isn't the word for Tasselhoff, but <laughs> infamous definitely infamous, infamous certainly yeah but more importantly i'm also I, I personally have a relationship with margaret and tracy and and that you know I, I was telling you i just spoke to both of them yesterday and i check in with them all the time and um you know i that's actually how i started or i started a relationship with wizards of the coast a lot of people think Oh, he was such a fan and was vocal about being a fan. And it's like, no, I, I, I actually, I wrote a script for Warner brothers or, you know, co-wrote a script for Warner brothers um, when they had the property. And um, because of that, I wound up being hired as a consultant to help, um, to help with Dragonlance. So there was a, uh, you know, I, I actually was, I was flown up to Seattle to meet, Tracy and, and Margaret and uh, to understand their plans for the, 
the property's future. And, uh, and, to, and because of that, I wound up, shoot, I wound up, Margaret invited me to uh, Gary Con that year. And then she invited me to Gen Con and, you know, Tracy and I started hanging out. Tracy ran me through a, a game of Ravenloft, which was mind blowing um to have to be inside of his head in in the module that he wrote which many people believe is the greatest D, &D module of all time and i got to play with margaret when she played as tasselhoff so i've gotten to travel quite a bit and, and get to know them really really well 